Hello my soccer universe, first things first, finally feeling better again, this is already the second video I'm shooting since uh, recovering yesterday, but it's the first one that will post and the other one you will get tomorrow with a very special unpacking, I gotta say. Now, while I've been recovering, I also had the chance to watch quite a few games. Sometimes the choices were hard because, you know, I have only two uh, screens, but I managed and then I watched some highlights here, here and there. I have to say the European qualifiers started quite well with a few unexpected results. Uh, I think for me the biggest surprise, but, you know, if you look in a little bit deeper, look into lineups, maybe not so much, but France just steamrolling the Netherlands 4-0. England's big win in Italy didn't maybe not come as unexpected because the writing was on the wall because there was, uh, especially when I look at the front line, a uh, real gulf of class, but then Italy almost made it back. So that was also an interesting happening uh, there. I'm wearing Austria. No, I was not at the game in Linz uh, because I was sick and I we had already decided beforehand that, that we're not going. Uh, they had a pretty, pretty good start and then another pretty surprising result was Sweden losing big at home to Belgium. Uh, so that was also a big one. Um, we'll talk about other results uh, when we get the run done, but I wanted to get uh, through that. I mean, overall, I don't think we had too uh, many big changes yet, but you know, we may see how it all goes forward. So a uh, few highlight games that I want to pick out. Uh, when we go on Thursday, Denmark against Finland uh, was one of those where uh, you, of course, would expect Denmark to win that one. But Finland is an opponent that can be nasty. The last time they played at the Parken, Finland actually won. But that was also the game where Christian Eriksen um, got his heart attack. So there are mitigating circumstances for sure. Denmark were the better team there, and it was the Rasmus Hoyland show uh, who scores a hat trick. I don't want to say on his uh, debut, but uh, pretty much um, one of, you know, he has not played for long for Denmark for sure. And uh, it's a guy who just at the beginning of this season played at Sturm Graz and Atalanta now scoring hat tricks for uh, Denmark. And I think we're going to hear a whole lot more from him. Um, there were some nervy moments in there because while Denmark had a won the lead at the half uh, from a goal kick, the ball comes to Puki who plays it to Antman in the 53rd, who with a very dry finish makes it 1-1 and then there were a few good saves in there from the Finnish goalkeeper uh, where you really thought they might hold on to the 1-1 draw but Hoyland then scores too uh, late on to make it a good start. I also have to mention the Danish shirts which are of course remake shirts of, from 92. Teeny bit, yeah, that's very novel, but I have to say the way they have done it and especially the sleeves on the long sleeves, that looks really cool and the icing on the cake were the numbers. <laughs> the big game on Thursday though was Italy against England. I already said there was a clear gulf of class, up, especially up front. I mean, Italy brought Rettigui from, it, from Argentina. And he hasn't even played, he wasn't even considered for Argentina. So it kind of tells you, it's a little bit uh, uh, weird um, to start up front. However, Mancini clearly likes him, but I do wonder, uh, you know, it doesn't speak well for the Italian national team. Let's put it that way that you put those on. I have to say, while the game was rather entertaining in the first half and Italy tried to keep it open, you could see as soon as it went towards goal that England were the better team right, right there. And then they got control of the, of the midfield. And at that point, it was always going England's way. Uh, after a corner, the ball falls to Rice, who makes it over one, one and then a penalty that... I honestly have, have to say, it was a little bit unlucky by Di Lorenzo, who played in his home stadium, but uh, Harry Kane converts that one. And it's 2-0 England, and everyone knew that they're going to win that game. Harry Kane now also the lone goals, uh, leading goal scorer for England. So uh, pretty a pretty big night for him. And then Grealish misses a sitter to make it 3-0 just before the half, which I honestly have to say that 2-0... While England were the better team, I felt the 2-0 tool, tool was a little bit harsh on Italy because you could see that they have a little bit um, um, nicer style of play, but England were uh, the more mature team and more effective up front. But I think a 3-0 would have been completely uh, out, of, out of it. However, for some reason, and we saw that movie before, second half, England were holding on. 
Italy get a quick uh, goal back through Rete Gui. And Rete Gui, Rete is the Italian word for goal, Gui, guy, the goal guy. Maybe that's a little bit too corny from my part. Uh, and then the Italy were pressing and had actually control. Uh, Mancini made the right changes. And while I don't think Italy then had really the chances to get an equalizer, uh, England were reeling and you know, uh, you got a, a yellow red for uh, Luke Shaw uh, within a few minutes. So there were quite a few things and you know, already the delaying tactics. I was really annoyed by Harry Kane just lying on the floor and always robbing himself in. Uh, but then, okay, that's fair. The Italians have been doing that for years. So I think England also uh, can do that. But overall, um, England, I think, deservedly won. But in the end, if Italy would get the equalizer, yeah, uh, you wouldn't be surprised. But I also have to say that the way that Italy did want to get the equalizer, but whipping crosses into the box against an England defense, that seemed a little bit odd to me. Um, another one I want to point out, of course, is Portugal, because Cristiano Ronaldo is now the leading capped uh, player, men's player. Women's record he will never get to. And he added two very decisive goals to his overall record. Goal scoring tally in internationals. No, he scored the third and the fourth goal in the 4 0 drowsing of Liechtenstein. Jean Cancel and Bernardo Silva scoring the first two. Slovakia only 0 0 against Luxembourg. Um, also want to point out. I actually saw a little bit of Bulgaria against Montenegro. The game was kind of tight. Then Montenegro scores the goal through uh, Kristovic in the 70th. However, later on, there were two really good chances uh, for Bulgaria to e e equalize where one Savic just clears the ball. Atletico Madrid Savic clears it off the line. So, uh, unlucky for Bulgaria. One of the, fam the family teams, however, the other family team, Austria, playing in Linz, had no trouble with Azerbaijan. No, I shouldn't actually say that because the first 20 to 20 minutes, it just didn't quite work uh, out. And Azerbaijan uh, have a very technically adept squad. Uh, they played some fancy stuff here and there. However, as soon as Rangnick took Baumgarten a little bit back to uh, limit the spaces uh, between the lines, then Austria had control of, of the game and very quickly scored in two, uh, two goals. Gregor Chodere missed one, scores uh, the, the second one, which was goalkeeping error. The first one was really nicely played uh, via Baumgarten and Sabitzer so making it 1-0. So 27th, 29th. That was more or less the game. Then a free kick after the half, Marcel Sabitzer makes it 3-0. And then it was a little bit maybe too much cruising because Mahmudov out of nowhere pulls one back, but Baumgartner uh, then within five minutes heads it in after Sabitzer corner. Could have been more than uh, players were very happy with the atmosphere in the new stadium in Linz. Well, also made me happy, uh, but you know, one of the biggest um, Talking points ahead of uh, these qual qualifiers were where Austria is going to play their games because Rangnick doesn't want to play in the Hapoel st Stadium and uh, neither Rapid nor Salzburg don't want to give the stadium uh, away because the, the renovations need to be made, which is kind of, yeah. And, you know, a lot of uh, ultra groups, even Lask Ultra, saying, ah, we don't want to have national team playing in our stadium. Give me a break. Give me a friggin' Break. The Czechs, very impressive over Poland. Also love the uh, new Czech jer uh, jersey, I have to, have to say. Within three minutes, they had a tunnel lead through Krejci and, and uh, Cvancara. Uh, just catching Poland on the wrong foot and then hanging on to onto Rizal Kuchter. The 64th makes it 3-0 and then Ozymanski only very late can pull one back. Uh, almost a similar start is what the uh, um, French had against the Dutch. A Dutch team that, you know, Frankie de Jong was missing. There were a few um, young players there. This was not a very well thought out Dutch team. One hears also that there was some um, chicken curry served that was uh, caused some trouble there. I don't want to put too, 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 too much on it. The reality is that France were just two levels above this Dutch team. The one thing I don't understand is why France couldn't play their home jerseys against the light orange. I have to say this light orange with against white doesn't look quite the right. I think if, they, if it plays against the dark card, it looks much better. Be it as it may, the head of the game, the controversy that um, Mbappe is now the captain for France and Griezmann being upset, they put that to bed within two minutes when Mbappe squares it over to Griezmann who makes it 1-0. 
Then the Dutch tried to come out a little bit, and yeah, uh, Silesen after uh, I think it was a, 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 a cross in the, uh, puts the ball right onto Upe Upenkamp's feet. It's two 0 after eight, and then France just every time they get in front of goal, seemingly scored. Um, but they really wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Germany. Uh, you can see the Colomani is um, letting the ball through. But they makes it three 0 twenty first minute, and then it was just uh, cruise control. Uh, and get and destroy the Dutch Mbappe with a few wiggles in the 88th and says okay let's make a fourth one and to top it off Mike Menio even saves a penalty for from Memphis Depay very badly taking penalty at that as well so uh, if you're a France fan this was was all good news all good news also if you're a Belgian fan because while Sweden had maybe the first chance in the game Belgium had actually quite good control over that game. Get an early goal through, uh, through Lukaku after Luka Bakio cross. Same combination in the second half uh, when Luka Bakio just uh, runs in and uh, shoots the ball at Lukaku in front of the front of goal. It was a really weird, weird goal. And every semblance of Sweden coming back was already gone there. Forsberg missed egg, egg, actually pretty big chance. And then laid on a Bakayoko run again finds Lukaku in the 83rd one i have should also mention that Slatan ibrahimovic came on is not the oldest player to ever play in european qualifiers but a big night for belgium sweden already find themselves in early troubles on the jersey watch probably the most beautiful jerseys uh the, the scotland 150 year kits that have been rolled out against cyprus i especially liked that it was played with the Red Sox. Although this irisism is a little bit more recent, I think within the last few 50 years that the Red Sox became a standard choice. Um, McGinn gave Scotland an early lead and then McTominay very late on two goals uh, before a Cypriot got sent off. I watched Armenia against Turkey. Uh, for me, the most interesting were, of course, the anthems. And the Turkish anthem was whistled and booed and although the soundman tried the best to reduce the noise there was no and you know uh, those two countries uh, have kind of a checkered past let's pull it that way and you can read up on that one a little bit more and then the stadium exploded when Özan Kabak scored an own goal to give Armenia the lead and then Armenia tried to hold it tight but um, you know Turkey had all the control but not the chances till Kökçü from Feyenoord uh, makes a long range shot, threads it through. It's 1 1, and uh, Antur Koglu in the second half makes it 2 1 for Turkey. Uh, they get the deserved win. If you saw, I mean, there was no Mkhitaryan over there, but we saw the lineups. Turkey, clearly the better team. However, you need to break down an Armenian team that was really buoyed by their fans. Switzerland, a very impressive 5 0 win um, at Belarus. Uh, Croatia dominated the game against Wales almost as they wanted both uh, teams playing in their away jersey which I found interesting um, especially since at the World Cup the Croatia home jerseys worked very well against red jerseys but this time not so UEFA uh, also the nice uh, choreography that the in, in a stance, the checkerboards, but in blue and white, because Croatia played in blue. I, I, I found it all very, was very well done. Kramaric gets Croatia finally the lead after a goal of his, I think, was already flagged for offside. Uh, they had enough chances. Uh, they even hit the crossbar once. Uh, Wales was not really in that game. Fought valiantly, yes, but they were not really in, in, in the game until in stoppage time they get an equalizer. Completely against the run of play, stealing a point at Croatia. I don't think it will hurt Croatia all the, all the much, but it's a big boost for Wales going forward. And then a similar deceiving result is the 3-0 of Spain against Norway. Because Spain controlled for the first 20 minutes totally that that game has got a beautiful goal through Dani Olmo. Typically Spain stuff. However, Norway then realized we don't have to be as respectful to Spain. And actually started to uh, create chances and had quite some... Most notably in the 80th minute, uh, Serloth, free shot, onto goal, and he misses. And then they had to pay the price for for, for that with uh, uh, Joselu, who came on in the 81st for Marata, Marata on his debut for Spain at 32. He scores a brace in the 84th and the 85th. And puts a game that never was 3-0. 
makes it a very decisive score a scoreline. But Norway can be really, really take something from the game. This was the typical Spain game. You score the one one nil, and then you try to play it nice, but you don't have the punch going through. Um, and a better team or a team that had a Holland would have punished you, and that did not happen. So yeah. Those are the first set of qualifiers. Uh, let's run through the standings. So Group A, we have Spain and Scotland now um, ahead. Uh, with Georgia and Norway, you see it is still the three-way race that I predicted before. Spain now slightly ahead of Norway. Uh, France and Greece, because, you know, it's after one, 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 one game, but it's still very, very much, although the Netherlands took a beating uh, there, it's still very, very, very much uh, they are in control of their own destiny. Uh, Italy also lost, but also still in control. England now a 93% chance of qualifying. But you know, uh, we have we have have to see. But England will probably do it easy, and Italy will rumble and stumble, and yeah, maybe stumble too much. Turkey uh, is a big away win for them, uh, as well as the draw for Wales. Still, you would think that Croatia uh, would qualify ahead of Wales, especially what we've seen. Uh, we still have Croatia expected to win this group, but it's now a much, much tighter affair overall. Uh, the, the Czechs are already in control of their group, slightly ahead of Poland. Austria and Belgium seem to be now the two teams going through in that one because Sweden really took a hit there. But, you know, I think it will all hinge on the Austria-Sweden game for sure as well. Uh, Serbia and Montenegro, Hungary has not played yet. So uh, we have to see where this will go uh, uh, going go, 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 go forward. But uh, Montenegro going a little bit closer to hung Hungary. But I would still expect Hungary there. Um, Denmark very much in control of the, of, of the group. Now Slovenia and Finland are the next two. Switzerland very clearly dominating ahead of Romania and Israel. Probably Romania can do that. Let's uh, see. And then the last last group, Portugal uh, and Bosnia will be the two teams to probably come out of that one. You see a selection of the playoffs. The one on the left is more or less fun. If this was really the final stance, this would be a potential way that these playoffs could look like. Um, on the right, it's a more realistic one. These teams would uh, current, are currently expected to make the playoffs. Again, um, I have to say that there will be five, at least five Group B teams. So it's all based on the Nations League ranking where you first start fill in the slots for C, then for B, then for A. And if there are more than four B teams, you have to randomly draw the four. So it's kind of com 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 complicated, but this is how it is expected to look like at the moment. Uh, I give you also the list here of winners and losers. Big wins for Montenegro, the away win that gives them a good chance. So this is the changes in the chances of Qualco qualifying at the same time. Bulgaria is a big loser. Uh, you see it also for uh, Sweden. They had they took a big hit. Uh, that loss at, at home to Belgium also boosted Austria a little bit more. Uh, Romania, the Czechs, Slovenia and Bosnia. Those are all big winners there. England's win, because they had such a high chance of qualifying, was maybe in that metric not as impressive. But you see, Italy is in the top three losers, because that home win you need to get. Upcoming games. Today, for me, it's all about England-Ukraine, which is the early kicker for the late kickoffs. Honestly, uh, it's a little bit hard. I Malta, Italy and Luxembourg, Portugal, because those are the big names. I think Northern Ireland, Finland, and Slovakia, Bosnia are probably tighter games. So uh, there you, there, 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 there you go. Um, similar thing. I mean, I will probably watch Austria, Estonia because you know you watch your own uh, national national team. Hungary, Bulgaria will be, I fear, a little bit of one side. Ireland, France could be atm atmospheric, but you see already. Uh, it's also not the Montenegro, Serbia, probably for the the neighboring component there. Um, and then the last one, I think Turkey, Croatia is for me the one, although Scotland, Spain takes a close second spot. And I want to actually see what Georgia can do against Norway. So that's it from me from Euro qualifying. Lev Lemanovic games you uh, saw, if you enjoyed it, I actually did. I'm very happy, happy about that. It's a little bit uh, more relaxed schedule, so that's always good. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!